Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu, and on this short video today, we'll be talking about Matteo Genduzzi. Now, there were lots of reports flying around yesterday that Arsenal will look to reward the Frenchman for his breakthrough season at the Emirates this summer doubling his wages to around £75,000 a week. Um, seems a little bit crazy to me, seems a little bit premature to me. I put a tweet out saying that I felt that we had other priorities, that he hadn't done enough yet to warrant that. And it was met with an almighty response. Lots of you criticising me, calling me clueless, telling me about how we needed to protect our asset. Well, I'm going to put my points across here on this video Um I've got more than the limited characters that Twitter allows you to. So fingers crossed, uh, you'll understand where I'm coming from by the end of this video. I don't expect all of you to agree. It's not the nature of the game, is it? Um, but let me know what you think, of course, uh, in the comments section below. Always interested to hear from you guys. Now, I just want to reiterate that, of course, the figures that we're talking about on this video are of course those that are being reported i can't put my hand on my heart and tell you that they're absolutely correct in that this whole story is is all concrete because as with any story surrounding football at the moment we don't fully know uh, what's going on but it is a report it is a strong report it's a report that's being picked up by a lot of reputable uh, media companies uh, even though it did come from the sun who are probably not so reputable but anyway it's been picked up by a lot of companies a lot of uh, outlets are reporting it so i think it's one that's worth discussing now if we look at Matteo genduzzi the individual signed of course from lorient in the summer and i don't think anybody expected us um to not be reliant upon him but for him to feature as much as he has throughout the season he's made 33 appearances in the Premier League this season, uh, picking up nine yellow cards along the way, no goals, no assists. In the Europa League, 10 appearances, one yellow card, one goal, no assists. In the EFL Cup, three appearances, two assists and two yellow cards. And in the FA Cup, just the one appearance and the one yellow card. So it is fair to say that Matteo Genduzzi has probably been overplayed this season. I don't think even when he signed or when he arrived, he expected to have gotten as much game time as he has. And in on the one hand, that's good because he's picked up lots of valuable experience. But on the other hand, I feel like there were times where Aaron Ramsey would have been a more suitable option. And I feel like at times Unai Emery maybe got that a little bit wrong. I think he was maybe putting a little bit too much pressure on the kid. But to be fair to the kid, he's never shied away from it. He's never looked, you know out of his depth he's in, in terms of his attitude he's always willing he always wants the ball even when he's when he's made a mistake he's confident he's very confident in his own ability and that is of course a positive and a great thing but when you're talking about a player who has made 33 Premier League appearances bearing in mind we play 38 games so he's only not appeared in five Premier League games this season there comes a point where you have to start judging him as a first team player and this whole thing of oh, you know, but he's a kid, etc., etc., kind of needs to be parked because he is playing in our first team. He is featuring week in, week out. Therefore, I have every right to judge him as a first team player. This is a guy who's made 33 appearances out of 38. So, of course, I'm going to judge him as a first team player. Having said that, I do take into account his age. I do take into account that he's stepped up a level, or two levels, even five levels coming from League Dirt and playing in the Premier League. But my focus is Arsenal Football Club. It's this team, and I want this team to do as best as it can. And I feel that particularly in the second half of the season, Matteo Genduzzi's performances have dropped off. And I always say this, you guys that listen to this regularly will know that I say this often. The most difficult thing to get out of a young player is consistency. And in the second part of the season, it's not been there. Matteo Genduzzi's performances have been very hit and miss, and, and quite frankly, not good enough at times. So let's put into context what we're talking about now. Now, this is a club who in January told us that they could not make any permanent signings because of the wage restrictions. Now, I understand that there are a few players leaving this summer. I know that Czech's going. I know that Welbeck's off. Uh, you know, we know that Lichtsteiner's going to be going too. So 
there is a significant chunk being knocked off of our wage bill, but surely we should be using that to bolster our squad and bring in better and more players because we clearly need them. There are certain positions that we're very short in. I know. I think everybody would agree that we need another centre back. So that extra forty thousand a week, whatever, that's going towards Matteo Guendouzi's improved deal, could be going towards paying a, a, a top quality centre back. It could be the difference between getting a grade B and a grade A centre back. So for me, this is not a priority. Matteo Guendouzi, if I'm not mistaken, still has three years left on his current contract. We're not in any danger of losing him with three years remaining on his contract. This could be done next season because the problem you have here is that if, as a football club, you jump the gun after one season, a season where he's been up and down, it has to be said, and go and say, right, we're doubling your money. What if Matteo Genduzzi doesn't develop at the rate that we expect him to next season? It wouldn't be the first time we've seen this. I can think of a few examples off the top of my head. I think we all thought that Jack Wilshere was going to be the next best thing. Didn't really happen, partly because of injuries and partly because, to be quite frank, he wasn't good enough. Then there's players like Danielson, who when they broke through, everyone was like, wow, look how good he is for his age. Quick, let's tie him down on a contract. And we ended up stuck with him. You know, it happens time and time again at Arsenal. And where people say we shouldn't let players go on freeze, I completely get that. But we're not talking about a player who's got two years left on his remaining deal. We're talking about a player who has three years left on his remaining deal and is yet to prove that he is the finished article. I know it's early, but let's be realistic. Let's keep our feet on the ground. Let's keep Matteo Genduzzi's feet on the ground. He's not quite there yet. To put into context the type of contract that we're looking to give him, if you're to believe these reports, of course, he'd be on the same money as Christian Eriksen at Tottenham. Now, Christian Eriksen is an integral part of that Spurs side, and he's done a hell of a lot more than Matteo Genduzzi has. So you can't, on the one hand, cry that Arsenal can't pay wages, and on the other hand, advocate giving someone like Matteo Genduzzi this contract so soon. I'm not saying never give him the contract. I'm not saying he won't develop into a solid player. But why risk it when you don't need to? Why risk it? Where is the motivation for these young players to improve and develop when you're going to hand them contracts like this from the very off? Spurs don't do that. Spurs don't do that. You hear lots of their players talking about the fact that you know they could get more money elsewhere but that model seems to work if you're not a man city if you're not a, a manchester united if you can't compete with the big boys financially that model works they've got a coach there who's getting the maximum out of this group but in terms of what they're laying out it ain't a great deal and look they're in the champions league final as much as it kills me to say it the point being here is that matteo genduzzi hasn't yet done enough to warrant this pay rise he might have done it by the end of next season even halfway through the season you know if he starts next season the way he had this season and he performs really well week in week out then why not call him to the table in December get him to sit down and do the deal then what is the need to do it now there are just far more pressing priorities at Arsenal Football Club right now than extending the contract and Boosting the funds on a contract of a player who still has three years remaining. It just doesn't make business sense. And, you know, I, I don't understand why people can't see that. And I don't understand why when you say something like this, people jump on your back and go, Oh, but what, what are you talking about? You're clueless. Blah, blah, blah. Why do you want Genduzi out? I don't want Genduzi out. I just don't think that he has done enough to warrant that contract right now at times this season he's been average he's been good sometimes but for the most part particularly the second half of the season he's been average nothing more than that it's not a personal attack at the guy I know he's young and in my opinion he shouldn't be playing as much as he has that's on the manager but to give him this contract now would be irresponsible in my opinion and for a club banging on about the fact that they can't compete financially with everybody else and that our wage bill is a real problem, giving him that sort of money so soon just makes absolutely no sense. Now I know there'll be lots of you who disagree with me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are the points I've made valid about Matteo Genduzzi? If not, let me know. Tell me your thoughts. I want to hear from you guys, of course. And don't forget, we'll be hosting our fan phone-in show 
on Thursday night at 9 p.m. UK time. So if you do want to get involved in that, it's a complete open forum. You can talk about whatever you want, Arsenal related. All you've got to do is DM us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC and we'll give you the information uh, to call in. So until then, guys, take care.